Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard Drost and I am presenting our ISB 2020 paper with the title Discovering Salient Anatomical Landmarks by Predicting Human Gaze. Let me start with a brief introduction to the topic. First of all, what is the definition of an anatomical landmark? According to the literature, it is a scientifically meaningful point of correspondence that matches between subjects of a given population. This distinguishes anatomical landmarks from other types of landmarks, such as SIFT features, which are based on low-level image features instead of anatomical knowledge. Such anatomical landmarks are crucial for image analysis tasks such as segmentation, performing biometric measurements, or image registration. Finally, the set of anatomical landmarks that are relevant for a given clinical task are usually defined a priori through expert guidelines. Let us look at the example of the fetal anomaly ultrasound scan. Expert operators acquire so-called standard views of the fetus, which are then used to check for fetal abnormalities and to perform biometric measurements for detecting fetal growth restrictions. Here we will look at the standard views of the fetal head, which are especially important because they are used to detect growth restriction and to check that the fetal brain is developing normally. Also, they display numerous anatomical landmarks, which makes them a natural application for our proposed landmark discovery method, as you will see later. For the first view, the transventricular plane, it is defined by the appearance of the anterior horn, the choroid plexus, the lateral ventricle, the midline echo, the skull, and the cavum septipelochidi, CSP for short. It is used to measure the ventricular atrium of the lateral ventricle and the head circumference. The second view is this, the transcerebellar plane, which is defined by the appearance of the CSP, skull, midline echo, anterior horn, vermis, occipital bone, and cerebellum. Now, what is the problem that we are facing? This is a large set of anatomical landmarks that the ultrasound operators are supposed to look at while acquiring the images according to the guidelines. But what the diagram doesn't tell us is which landmarks are visually salient to the expert when acquiring the data. In other words, we don't yet know which landmarks and which parts of the landmarks are most informative and actually used by the experts in practice. So the following questions arise. First, can we develop a method to discover visually salient landmarks? Second, can this method help us to detect such visually salient landmarks automatically in unseen images? Now, how do we address these questions? Our approach consists of three steps. First, record imaging data alongside real-time expert gaze tracking data in a routine clinical setting. Second, train a model such that it learns to predict the expert gaze distribution, which we will refer to as visual saliency map. In other words, train the model to predict for each point of the image how likely it is that the expert will look at it. Third, use the trained model to detect salient anatomical landmarks in unseen images. I will, talk, I will talk about how we do that in a moment. Let us first have a look at step one, recording the imaging and gaze data. We attach an unobtrusive slim eye tracker to the monitor of a standard clinical ultrasound machine and track the gaze of the expert operators while they perform routine fetal anomaly scanning. For this study, we used 212 full-length fetal anomaly scan videos with the corresponding real-time gaze data. Let us move on to step two, training a model to predict visual saliency maps. As a model, we choose a ResNet-style convolutional neural network, CNN for short, 
and dilate the convolutions of the last two layers such that spatial information is preserved. Importantly, we have shown in previous work that while learning to predict visual saliency, the CNN automatically learns semantic feature representations of the images that can be used for high-level tasks, such as recognizing the standard view type. We will exploit this property in order to label the discovered salient landmarks, which I will explain on the next slide. To compute the training loss, we generate target saliency maps by convolving the recorded gaze points with a small Gaussian kernel that accounts for measurement uncertainty and the receptive field of the operator. Then, we backpropagate the callback Leibler divergence, KLD for short, between the target and predicted saliency maps. We train the model on 90 entire unlabeled ultrasound videos and corresponding operator gaze data. Step three is the actual discovery and detection of the salient anatomical landmarks. First, the trained CNN is used to predict the visual saliency maps of the images of interest. Next, the landmark locations are extracted by computing the local maxima of the saliency maps. These are the points that the expert would most likely gaze at. In addition to localizing the salient landmarks, we would like to assign them semantic labels so that they can be matched across images. Therefore, we extract the CNN features of the landmarks. That means we extract the activations of the last CNN layer at the positions of the local maxima. As mentioned before, these feature vectors are semantic representations of the landmarks. So as a last step, we can assign labels to the landmarks by computing the landmark features for all images and clustering the features with a simple k-means algorithm. The number of the clusters is determined automatically by maximizing the silhouette coefficient, which means maximizing the difference between the mean nearest cluster difference distance sorry, and the mean intra-cluster distance across all samples. Now, let's have a look at the results. Let's first see what the output of the visual saliency predictor looks like. Here, we show an example of an acquisition of the transventricular plane. The actual sonographer gaze is shown with a little green cross, and the predicted saliency map is overlaid as a heat map. There is clearly a good agreement between the actual gaze and the predicted saliency. Moreover, we can see that the sonographer does not look at all of the specified landmarks. Instead, they seem to focus on the CSP and the lateral ventricle only. Now, let's look at the salient landmark discovery results. Here, we see some randomly selected images of the transventricular plane. This is the corresponding saliency prediction. Finally, we obtain the salient anatomical landmarks with corresponding cluster labels 0 and 1. We can see that two landmarks were identified as salient. The Cavum septipilocidi, CSP, with label 0, and the upper boundary of the lateral ventricle with label 1. Similarly, here are three randomly selected transcerebellar images, the corresponding saliency prediction, and the salient landmarks. As for the transventricular plane, the CSP is identified as salient in addition to the posterior boundary of the cerebellum. Note that the cluster label of the CSP matches not just across among the images of the transcerebellar plane, but also with the images of the transventricular plane, even though angle and appearance are different. We evaluate the precision of the discovered landmarks to the task of image registration. In general, this is a challenging task for ultrasound images due to speckles, artifacts like shadows, and distracting structures like anatomies of the mother. We construct an affine transformation 
that consists of horizontal flipping, translation, rotation, isotropic scaling, and, uh, and is constructed by aligning the matching discovered landmarks. To evaluate the registration, we manually annotate the key anatomical structures, specifically the CSP, the head circumference, HC for short, in addition to the lateral ventricle for the transventricular plane and the cerebellum for the transcerebellar plane. Here we can see some exemplary qualitative results for the transventricular plane with overlaid annotations. We can observe that the horizontal orientation is successfully aligned and the positions of the anatomical structures are matched. Here are exemplary results for the transcerebellar plane. And again, the horizontal orientations are aligned and the annotated structures are matched. This indicates that the discovered landmarks are indeed suitable to align the standard view images of the he fetal head. Let's have a look at the qual quantitative evaluation of the registration quality. We compute the alignment errors of the annotated structures relative to the respective length of the, of the head circumference long axis. Next, we implement three baselines. The first one is no registration at all. The second one is manual alignment of the horizontal orientation of the head through left-right flipping. And third, the third one is left-right flipping plus intensity-based registration with the normalized cross-correlation metric. Let's have a look at the results. We can see that the registration based on the proposed salient landmarks results in the lowest alignment errors compared to all baselines, indicated by the blue bars in the plot. The lowest registration errors are observed for the alignment of the lateral ventricle and the cerebellum. Overall, we can summarize that the proposed method is successful at automatically revealing visually salient landmarks that experts pay attention to in practice. No manual labeling is required since the method is based on modeling visual saliency through automatically acquired gaze data. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first such method to be proposed. Moreover, the discovered salient landmarks are useful for the downstream task of registering the ultrasound images. It does so by ignoring irrelevant information, just like a human would. Naturally, there are limitations to this method. First, it is necessary to have gaze tracking data available for the images from the domain of interest. However, gaze trackers are cheap and once set up, the gaze tracking data can be acquired automatically during routine clinical practice. Regarding the application to image regist registration, at least two salient landmarks need to be present and detected so that alignments can be perf performed. In conclusion, we presented a new approach towards the important task of landmark detection, which reveals scientifically meaningful and visually salient landmarks, as opposed to low-level landmark detectors like SIFT features. In future work, it would be interesting to apply the methods to other image modalities than ultrasound, such as MRI or CT images. Thank you very much for your attention, and please feel free to contact me with any questions via the virtual conference tool or via email.